in this question we are asked to match the lettered ribs shown in this picture with some features and each of these ribs may be labeled with more than one of the features that I'm going to tell you now uh, let's have an example the first feature is the presence of scalene tubercle a scalene tubercle is a characteristic for the first rib and uh, so here this uh, would be the first rib and this is the scalene tubercle here this is the cur first rib it is the uh, most uh, curved rib and it has a superior and uh, surface and inferior surface it has an in, in a internal border and external border and uh, the internal border is characterized by the presence of a scalene tubercle for the attachment of scalenous anterior muscle floating rib so the floating rib is by definition is the rib whose costal cartilage is not attached to the sternum at all it's not attached to the sternum neither uh, directly nor indirectly these are ribs 11 and 12 and so in a this is either rib 11 or rib 12 i cannot exactly say from this picture whether it's 11 or 12 both of them the 11th rib and the 12th rib they are short and they have a single facet on their uh, head there is no tubercle there is no neck and uh, so this is either 11th or the 12th uh, rib and anyhow both of them are floating ribs tuberosity for serratus anterior this is a characteristic feature for the second rib and uh, in d we can see this is the second rib it looks like the typical rib but it is characterized by the presence of a big tuberosity here for the attachment of serratus anterior muscle in fact serratus anterior muscle is attached by digitations eight digitations to the upper eight ribs but specifically in the second rib the attachment to the bone uh, imprints a, a big tuberosity for serratus anterior but this does not mean that serratus anterior is attached to other ribs extending from the first to the eighth rib atypical rib the atypical ribs include rib uh, first rib second rib the 11th and 12th ribs so these three ribs rib in a b and d they are atypical ribs the rib in c is in fact it's a typical rib we can see that it has a head a neck a tubercle an angle here a superior border and in the and inferior border uh, here so this is typical rib costal cartilage felt at the sternal angle the costal cartilage that is present at the level of the sternal angle is that of the second rib second costal cartilage so uh, this only matches with d does not articulate with a vertebral transverse process the part of a rib that articulates with a vertebral transverse process is the tubercle of the rib so the first rib has a tubercle second rib has a tubercle all the typical uh, ribs here they have tubercles the only ribs that do not have tubercles and do not articulate with the transverse process of a vertebra uh, are the 11th and 12th ribs provides attachment for scalenous posterior muscle in the neck there are three scalene muscles scalenous anterior is attached here to the uh, scalene tubercle on the first rib scalenous medius is attached to the superior border of the first rib uh, behind the uh, groove for the subclavian artery and scalenous posterior is in fact it's attached to the second rib costal cartilage does not articulate with the sternum which means that it should be a floating rib whose costal cartilage does not articulate with the sternum neither directly or indirectly and so it will be this rib which is either the 11th or the 12th rib the head carries a single articular facet so ribs whose heads carry a single articular facet are ribs 11 and 12 so here this one carries a single articular facet on the head so as the first rib because the facet on the head of the first rib articulates with body of t1 vertebra only it does not articulate with a vertebra above it which would be which will be a cervical vertebra the other ribs which are shown here they have two facets 
on their head. The superior facet articulates with the body of the vertebra, which is located above in the series, and the inferior facet articulates with the body of the vertebra of corresponding number. Forms a boundary of the superior thoracic aperture. The superior thoracic aperture is bounded by the first rib, manubrium of the sternum, and the body of the first thoracic vertebra, and so it is rib B that forms a boundary of the superior thoracic aperture. Typical rib, as we have mentioned, that C is typical, the others are atypical, first rib, second rib, 11th or 12th ribs, they are atypical. Provides attachment for external oblique muscle. The external oblique muscle has eight digitations and they arise from the lower eight ribs. Serratus so anterior is attached to the upper eight ribs, while external oblique muscle is attached to the lower eight ribs by eight digitations. So a rib A, which could be 11th or 12th rib, provides attachment for external oblique muscle. Definitely rib B and D, which are the first and second ribs, they do not provide attachment for external oblique muscle. Rib C could provide attachment for external oblique muscle. So I can include it as well. 